Janice Williams grew up in Maple Hill and Topeka, graduated from Hayden High School, and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in English from Washburn in 2005. As a student, she was a member of Sigma Tau Delta Honor Society, was a staff writer for the Washburn Review newspaper, a tutor at the Washburn Writing Center, and worked part-time at Kansas Legal Services. Janice shared a fond memory when she was a student tutor for the Writing Center. She said the chair of Washburn's English department used to babysit her infant son while she tutored at the center. Was that Dr. Faulkner or was it Dr. Stein? Oh, I love Dr. Stein. Yeah. After graduation, she stayed on with Kansas Legal Services for 10 years, working full-time in public law advocacy for children and families. In 2016, Janice was named CEO of Topeka Habitat for Humanity, and among other things, she has developed the Aging in Place program, which helps Topeka's aging population continue to live in their homes with increased affordability, accessibility, safety, autonomy, and dignity. Under her leadership, Topeka Habitat for Humanity is the first habitat in the nation to pilot the House to Home program, which seeks to eradicate predatory contract for deed, rent to own housing contracts, and convert low income buyers into affordable deed mortgage holders. Janice has always been a go getter with a drive to do good. Her passion for nonprofit service started at an early age with a strong family influence. Her grandmother, Marge Roberts, was founding director of Topeka's Let's Help and set an expectation for her family. If you're old enough to work, you're going to serve. And serve she does. Janice is president of Washburn Women's Alliance, an organization providing financial assistance to help single parents continue their education. She received assistance from the Alliance when she was a student and admits she would have not achieved success at Washburn without its support. She is also an agency member of the Shawnee County Advocacy Council on Aging, a member of the Affordable Housing Task Force, and a long-term volunteer for Silverbacks. Janice has been recognized for her service to the Topeka community as a Topeka 20 Under 40 honoree, YWCA Woman of Excellence, and as a three-time presenter at Habitat for Humanities National Conference. She met her husband, Travis, who is also an Ichabod when they were students at Washburn. Janice is mom to her son and daughter, and a dog mom to her corgis. She is an avid New York Times crossword completer and has completed its daily crossword puzzle every day since last February, picking up where her grandfather left off after his passing. It's alumni like Janice that make me proud to be an Ichabod, and this morning she will present Building a Solid Foundation, Education, Servant Leadership, and Housing. Please help me welcome Janice Walkhouse. Good morning. Good morning. This is a little nerve-wracking. Um, my mom is here today, and I was telling people she's not often in the audience for things like this, so I'm not going to look this direction. <laughs> Um, when the university reached out, I kind of thought it was a joke. <laughs> um, I often say I'm just Janice, and I just use the gifts that I have and the um, foundational principles that I have to do what I can. And so it is quite an honor to be here today. I am going to talk a lot about foundation. Um, foundation is important in housing. It's important in our lives. Without a solid foundation, we can't build walls, actual walls. Um, we can't build up ourselves to be the best versions that we can. And so um, I'm going to come back to this. I promise it's all going to circle back at some point in time. But this is the foundational principles of Topeka Habitat for Humanity and how we work. And it starts down there in the bottom with gifts, dreams, and concerns. If we don't ask those of ourselves, if we don't ask those of the people that we serve, we cannot achieve outcomes and success. And so um, I'm going to start with what I thought my just give strings and concerns were. So this picture has a lot of meaning to me. Um, when I was 17 and a half, I found out that I was pregnant with um, my now son, Gabriel. And my brother, Andrew, who couldn't be with us today, I made the very bold choice to make me his confirmation sponsor. <laughs> As a uh, single teen, about to be mother in a Catholic sacrament, that was a very bold choice. And him and I would attend these meetings, and 
um, we were preparing for him to receive the sacrament, and there was this exercise where you had to put a word that described the other person in a balloon and pop it. When I popped my balloon, this was what was in it. And this, God, he would have been 12 maybe, right? Yeah. 12 year old boy, 13 year old boy, thought that I was courageous. And I thought I was just very scared. Scared of what was to come, scared of what was going to happen to my life. Um, scared of ooh, how to be a mom in the coming months, scared of how to be a better role model. And he looked at me and said, but it's true. And I still have this today. Um, it is hanging on my fridge. It's survived with me through uh, 22 years, three house moves, multiple career changes. And it's just a reminder that he saw something in me that I needed to see in myself. And I think that's where everything starts, right? Who, how does someone else see you, and how do you tell that to someone? And I had these amazing, strong mentors in my life and this solid foundation of family, uh, family focused on service, family focused on love, family focused on giving, that really showed me that I was courageous and that I was strong and that I could be brave. And one of those people is Essie. This is my grandmother. Um, she is one of those strong foundational people for me. When she found out that I was pregnant as a teen mom, she said, you better not let this mess up your life. <laughs> and I took that to heart because she is one of those people that showed me what courage could be. She was widowed at a very young age. She was raising a three um, younger gentlemen. She taught herself how to drive in her 20s. Um, she decided that she was going to pursue a career. She served her whole life. She drove us places. She volunteered to be a leader reader at our grade school. Everyone knew she was Grandma Essie. And she was this strong, powerful, caring individual. And, and this person is the reason that I do the crossword every day. This is Grandpa Tack. Um, who um, left us earlier this year, he reminded me every day that I was powerful and strong and brave, beautiful, kind. If you had a bad day, you just drove your car to his house, sat right there, and let him tell you why you were still a good person. Uh, when he drove me to Chicago um, to attend college, where I promptly found out that I was expecting um, Gabe, and when I came back, he said, you better go get that education, and you better do something powerful. This is March that everyone, I think, is quite familiar with. Um, she passed long before Gabriel was born, but she really was the reason that everyone believed in service and service to our community. I am blessed to be one of her 38 grandchildren. Um, every time I say, um, Marge was my grandma. People just say, oh my goodness, because she was just one of those people. And Susie's right. From the time you could walk, you were called to serve. I think I started serving um, my first Christmas bureau when I was maybe in kindergarten. I already see tears over there. <laughs> um, she was just one of those people who um, decided that if you had time, you were going to serve. And serve we did. Um, and we did so um, well into past our time um, without her. So I'm going to leave that up for a little bit and um, get back to my time at Washburn. With those foundational individuals, and I will get to my mom at some point in time, um, I, after I had my son Gabriel, I did uh, re-enroll at Washburn in 2001. He was born in April 2001. I enrolled at Washburn in the fall. Um, I started taking a couple of classes. I did not know the impact that Washburn was going to have on me and what an impact it did. I was a scared, um, young, single mother who was uh, propelled by this amazing caring foundational family who babysat who encouraged me to keep going, who watched him so I could study. It was here at Washburn that I found my voice, that I found my ability to stand proud, um, that I found lifelong friends hanging out um, on the balcony of what was then Morgan Hall, 
that I found people that would never leave my side to this day. Um, and that includes professors, teachers, and advisors. It was there that I received support from the Washburn Women's Alliance um, with people like Cindy, Cindy Rogers that are here today to be embraced by a body of women professionals that did not stigmatize single parenthood but encouraged you to keep going was like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. And it is the reason I served that organization today. Without the support of the Washburn Women's Alliance, I do not believe that I would have graduated and I do not believe that I would have believed that I could be a leading professional in the community. So thank you, Cindy, for your um, insight to establish this great organization. And thank you for being one of those people that inspired me to be a professional while still being a single mother. I uh, worked on campus. I tried to lead on campus as best as I could. I often had a baby then toddler with me every step of the way. Um, and it gave me the foundation to form my story. So we're here again with the foundation, and I graduated in 2005, um, and my mom had the courage to go and do it in 2013. 11, 2013. So um, I was a first-gen student, and my mom decided to go back as a non-traditional single mother student at that time. I think she just said, and I didn't know this, that she also received support from Washburn Women's Alliance. My mom had the courage to go back after I graduated from Washburn. Seeing her walk across that stage in the spring of 2013 was one of the happiest moments of my life. Um, she had been a mother our whole life. She had encouraged us all to pursue education, to be the best women and children that we could be to serve others, and then she went and achieved her degree, and I know it wasn't easy. And she worked so hard for it, and today she is a servant leader in our community as well, um, keeping adult, vulnerable adults um, safe through adult protective services. And then my sister did the same thing. Um, she went and graduated from Washburn, and then she did it again. <laughs> She got her master's. There's a theme here, and it's these strong, powerful role models that we had in our life. It, are, it is the people that were not afraid to tell us that we were greater, that we had greater potential, that we could serve, and we could serve graciously. And I'm back to this, this foundational principle. To achieve success in any realm, you have to have that solid foundation. To build safe and affordable housing, we have to have that solid foundation. We have to ask people, if they want to be successful, what their gifts, dreams, or concerns are. People did that for me, and now I'm blessed to do that for others. We ask people, what are your gifts? What are your dreams? Are your gifts to serve others? Are your gifts to um, be someone that um, prepares amazing food, as one of our homeowners does? Is your dream to open a restaurant? Is your dream to return to Washburn and seek a degree? What are your concerns? Is it where you're going to lay your head at night? Is it how to balance your budget? Is it how you're going to make a stable foundation for your children? And with that, we can build people up, create networks, create the social cohesion, the sense of community, the sense of pride, that really allows people to be successful in stability, in education, in achieving success, in addressing the social determinants of health by giving them a safe, decent, affordable place to lay their heads at night. And we have achieved great success um, using this servant leadership model of starting with the person first. What do you want? What are you good at? And how can we help you achieve that? And I couldn't do that without um, an amazing team, um, a couple of which are with today. Just raise your hands because you're so wonderful. <laughs> um, I have this wonderful team of servant leaders who look at people and look at them first and the outcomes later. 
who are you, how can we help you succeed, and what can we do for you? And I think that's because we were all led to believe that there's something greater within ourselves, and we want to be that for someone else. We want to be that foundational principle. We want to be that Grandpa Jack, that Grandma Essie, that Grandma Marge, that Mama Rose, who is the metaphorical mom to our whole team, um, to tell them that they can do something greater. We do this for people trying to achieve home ownership. We do it for people trying to stay in their homes. And we do it for people that are trying to get out of um, contracts for deeds and predatory mortgages, uh, predatory contracts for deeds and rental agreements so that they can have stability and safety in their lives. We were able to do that for the Parker family, um, our 100th family we served at Speak Habitat for Humanity, who are now excellent leaders in the community. Following a stable, safe, secure home, uh, Jeremy went to Washburn Tech, achieved a certificate in welding, and their family is not surviving, but thriving today. We did that for uh, Jessica and Brent Moses whose uh, journey to housing was one that was so critical. They lived in a rental home in Montana that was unsafe, that was filled with mold, that was not accessible. Brett had been um, receiving dialysis treatments for several years and was trying to get a kidney transplant. He was not able to be approved for that because the home that they were going to return to in the rental was not safe. It wasn't healthy. Um, and so he was continually denied that opportunity. He became sicker and sicker and sicker. They moved into their home um, last summer and Jessica matched with Brent and donated him her kidney in, um, just a couple of months ago. and. It is going so well. So uh, a solid foundation literally saved his life. We did that for Alika, who was um, sleeping on floors for about six years. Um, she did, always made the sacrifice to serve her children before herself. She did not see the value in her gifts until someone echoed that back to her. And she looked most forward to sleeping in her own bed, which she has done so every day for a year now. We did that for Jordan, who slept in her car, who uh, lived at the Topeka Rescue Mission, who did not know uh, the power within herself until, again, that was reflected back to her. And that was echoed to her, and she now has lived in her home for two months. And we did that for Lindsay, who is enrolled at Washburn this semester and um, going to pursue a degree in law, uh, which is something she never, ever expected. And she has now lived in her home almost for one year. And she needed to be reminded that she had that power. So my message today really is be that for someone else. Be that person. Um, for someone else. If you see something powerful in someone, tell them that. If you think that someone has the power to grow, be that supportive system. We can't move forward without a solid foundation. We cannot build walls. We cannot achieve safe housing. We cannot achieve educational um, outcomes without someone being that foundation for us. Be that for someone else. Be that person that echoes that you are powerful and wonderful and good. Be that leader. Start with telling someone. Swing a hammer if you want. Um, there are ways to get involved in these journeys. My two folks back there will talk to you about that if you'd like. Uh, be that person that is that solid foundation for someone else. Be that mentor. Be that Cindy that shows someone that they can be a powerful leader as a single mother. Be that Jack that tells someone that they are beautiful and kind and powerful even though they are struggling. Be that Josh that reminds you that you have impacted your journey. Be that Lacey that uh, welcomes someone to be their friend as they are just a struggling student. Be that Rose that encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves. To my children who couldn't be here today, one, who I would not let out of first hour algebra, 
and one who is in quarantine, they're the reason. Um, without these foundational principles and these people telling me that I could achieve, I wouldn't be the best version of myself for them. To Gabriel, in case he watches the YouTube later, uh, thank you for being my North Star, always. You are the reason that I stand here today. You are the reason that I decided to pursue a degree. I wanted to be something better for you. You are my shining light. You are everything. Thank you for being mine. Um, to Eden, she is the reason I serve so selfishly. She is powerful and brave and beautiful and strong. And I am encouraged by her bravery and beauty every day. Thank you for being mine. To my family that's here today, thank you for being that foundation. I would be nothing without you. I, I can't even say the impact that you've had on me. You babysat, you encouraged me, you still do. You're my greatest supporters. Be that for someone else. Be that foundational principle. Help someone else build that solid foundation so that they can achieve success. And I couldn't have done that without Washburn, my family, and this community. So, thank you. Go. The, the families that you serve, I mean, do you only um, build homes for folks like this? Or do you also, um, are there other houses in the community that you purchase and rehab to um, to help folks get a leg up? Solidly great question. Um, so our, our key program is our partnership housing program, which is that traditional build from the ground up model. Um, we select families once a year and work with them for the following 12 to 24 months minus COVID, um, where we um, select them based on an ability to pay, a willingness to partner, and a need for safe and affordable housing. Um, we also, at the same time, run a very, very robust aging in place program, which rehabilitates and repairs the homes of the aging in our community. So if we think about um, the aging, they're our greatest gift in my mind. Um, some of the most impactful people in my life were not always, but we're the aging for the better part of my life, um, allowing them to continue to be that foundational principle and the, those foundational leaders for our community by not having them be displaced. So that program sends two people in, one of which is here today, to work literal magic. Um, they go in and they um, ask them not only about their housing, but their life. Do you need connected with food? Do you need connected with socialization? Um, do you need connected with other resources? And um, to date, we have repaired over 500 homes in the community. And as of last check, 497 of those people are still living in their housing. Um, so we are addressing the housing crisis by pre-getting to the people that we think would be displaced without services. Um, through House to Home, we are rehabilitating homes that people are purchasing through a contract for deed after we make them mortgage holders so that they're not at risk of losing their housing. We would love to get to a point of rehabilitating home, purchasing and rehabilitating homes. We are just not there yet. We are a small but mighty locomotive. There's 10 of us. So we do the best that we can with 10 very wonderful staff people um, and serve well over 300 people a year. That was a good question, thank you. Yes? Uh, where does your funding come from? That's an awesome question. Um, we receive, our, our primary fundraiser is our ReStore. So if you have not stopped, you shopped at our ReStore. It's at 121 North East Gordon. <laughs> in Noda. Uh, so we don't do a gala, we don't do a big event. Um, we have a restore that really is um, so it's part of our mission in that it does not put things into the landfill. We want to be good stewards of our Earth's resources and our community's resources. So individuals donate um, used items to the restore, home improvement items, and then they are sold to the public for a fraction of the cost. That is a primary source of funding, as well as the payments that the homeowners uh, give back to us. So all of our homeowners pay a zero interest mortgage. You heard that right, zero interest. It's the best competitive mortgage on the market. Um, and that comes back to us so that we're able to continue what we're doing. We also um, fundraise through grants. Um, we 
do quite a bit of um, community grant making with the help of the Topeka Community Foundation, um, other corporations, and then we are a City of Topeka CHODO, which is a community housing development organization that allows us to receive funds to help do that very large pieces of the, found, the actual foundation. So um, we have a diverse variety of funding, but we work very hard at it as well. Yeah. I remember you bringing your son to watch your meetings. I knew you did. <laughs> and it was wonderful. Can you talk about what that did for him and being in college and coming with you? I don't know that he remembers that, to be very honest with you. Um, he probably thought it was normal. I mean, I would lug him around, and he would come to classes, and he would come to review meetings when I didn't have sitters. Um, most of my sitters were still in high school, and so they actually had things to do. Um, I don't know that he remembers that, but he must have thought it was normal. I mean, the day I looked over, and I was tutoring a student, and Dr. Stein was baby wearing Gabe. Like, he had him, I don't know where he even found the rack, but he was baby wearing him. And then I couldn't find him afterwards. I'm like, Karen, where did he go? He was lecturing while baby wearing Gabe. <laughs> and that is just, um, I don't know that you get that at another university. I don't know that that is something that I would have uh, received from any place but this. Washburn is so special to my heart for that reason because unlike what I think some institutions do inherently, there was no bias and there was no stigma for being a single mom. It was a literal row of cheerleaders telling you, keep going, keep going. And that I did. And I could not have done that without this type of culture here at Washburn. If I don't feel comfortable on the job site, how do I help you? Great. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> we have a lot of opportunities to volunteer. Um, we accept volunteers at our restore um, where you can sort and help um, serve the community, clean, um, craft, recycle items. Um, job site is always an option. And then repairs are an awesome option. Um, so helping build ramps, helping paint homes, helping clean the gutters of individuals that um, can't do that on their own. And then, of course, raise your voice. Housing advocacy is so important. In Topeka, we do have a housing crisis. Um, in every community across the United States, we have an affordable housing crisis. And so, continually advocating for um, efforts and funding to help affordable housing is something that everyone can do. Everyone has a voice, and that voice can be powerful.